Halloween, a holiday associated with fear and monsters. You might think of the werewolf, a man that can turn into a wolf. Maybe you might think of the zombie, an undead creature that mindlessly walks around. And of course, there is the vampire, a blood-sucking monster originating from Romania. It is common instinct to think that these monsters are nothing more than myths and works of fiction. But could there be more to it than that? That's what I am seeking to answer. In this documentary, we will explore all three monsters and their origins. Starting, of course, with the werewolf. Chapter 1. The Wolf The wolf is a well-known animal, a ferocious beast capable of tearing apart anyone who crosses its path. Or, with enough time, they can become a pet, loved by many people across the globe. It is no wonder why a legend about a man turning into a wolf would come into existence. But where did this legend come from anyway? To that, we turn to Babylon and their Epic of Gilgamesh. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh fell in love with a woman, but later rejected her after she turned her previous mate into a wolf. Another appearance of werewolves comes from Greek mythology specifically the legend of Lycaon. In the legend, Lycaon invites Zeus to his castle for dinner. Lycaon decided to serve the remains of a sacrificed boy to Zeus. This made Zeus angry and turned Lycaon into a wolf. Now while the legends might have helped inspire the legend of the werewolf, what about documented cases in history? To that, we turn to 16th century France. Two men, Pierre Brigat and Michael Verdun, reportedly made allegiance with the devil and were consequently given an ointment that turned them into wolves. They killed numerous children, and when they were finally caught, they were burned to death. Another instance happened in Germany around the same time. Peter Stubb was a man accused of being a werewolf and killing numerous men women and children, eating them. There are reports of people seeing Peter transform into a wolf. Once caught, Peter claimed he had a belt that could turn him into a wolf. There's plenty of controversy, as these are alleged and it's not fully confirmed what actually happened. If there are reports of people becoming wolves, does this mean that werewolves are real? Well, there are diseases that could be responsible. For instance, Peter the Wild Boy, believed to be a werewolf by his behavior. It was later discovered that he had pitt Hopkins syndrome, a genetic disease that causes irregular facial features, behavioral features, intellectual disabilities, and so much more. A much more likely disease is hypertrichosis, a disease that causes irregular hair growth all over the body. People with this condition have a wolf-like appearance. However, this condition does not affect behavior. There are many diseases that cause irregular behavior, and when those diseases are paired with hypertrichosis, this gives the illusion of a man turned into a wolf. But what about the fact that this manic behavior is only present during the full moon? Surely that's all superstition. Actually, the full moon does affect behavior. A study conducted at Australia's Calvary Newcastle Hospital, a study in which they examined the 91 violent incidents at the hospital from August 2008 to July 2009, showed that 23% of them happened on the full moon. The incidents usually happen for people who are drunk. Perhaps the werewolves are people with hypertrichosis who fall into depression, and people being afraid of them, and they decided to drink. Intriguing impacts of their behavior are made them violent, especially on full moons. To explain what was happening, the people of the time thought they were people who turned into wolves. Of course, a lot has changed. Werewolves are very common in pop culture, especially the Twilight and now Wednesday. But what about our other monsters? Let's take a look at those. Chapter 2 The Undead 
Another popular icon of Halloween is, of course, the zombie. The Zombie is Haitian in origin and is actually a fairly new legend originating in the 1800s during the slave trade. The legend itself originates from the religion of Vodou. Zombies were said to be mindless slaves reanimated from the dead by witchcraft. Zombification was used as a threat to prevent slaves from committing suicide. In Haitian folklore and religion, there are two types of zombies. The first is the more well-known zombie, which is the reanimated undead. But there are also incorporeal zombies, known as the zombie astral. In Vodou, the human soul consists of the spirit and the flesh. The zombie astral is the spirit lacking flesh, while the more traditional zombie is the flesh lacking the spirit. In Vodou beliefs, the zombie is a temporary entity as they believe God will reclaim the soul. The word zombie is thought to have originated from the Congo words Zambi and Zombie, which are used for spiritual beings such as deities. So are zombies actually a result of magic and witchcraft, or is there something more scientific going on here? To answer the question, let's examine the process of zombification a little more closely. The process is started by rubbing a powder on a wound called the Coke de Padre, which includes tetrodotoxin venom from a puffer fish. Afterwards, a second powder would be used consisting of deliriant drugs. Deliriant drugs are a form of hallucinogens. What would happen is the tetrodotoxin would cause a temporary paralysis that gives the appearance of death. When the toxin wears off, the victim would come to. Mixed with the deliriant drugs, the victim would be in a state of psychosis a state in which they could easily be brainwashed into doing the deeds of the one performing the ritual. In other words, while the victims weren't truly dead, their mind practically was. When the victims truly died, that was when God reclaimed their souls, so to speak. This goes to show how drugs and toxins can easily be mistaken for magic and witchcraft. Chapter 3. Things and Blood The last monster we will be investigating is the Vampire, perhaps the most famous and frightening of the Halloween legends. The Vampire has many known weaknesses and physical features compared to our other legends. From large fangs to lacking reflection and even pale skin, the Vampire is nothing short of a monster. So what could be the explanation here? Well, Vlad the Impaler is one many people turn to. Could Vlad be the inspiration? Contrary to popular belief, Vlad was not the inspiration for the vampire. He is an inspiration for only one vampire, Dracula. Perhaps the explanation lies in Erythropoietic Protoporphyria, or EPP for short. EPP causes sufferers to have pale skin and suffer from tiredness. Sufferers are also sensitive to UV light and burn in sunlight. Sufferers are also known for drinking animal blood to relieve their symptoms. It is very easy to see why people might believe this to be the explanation for the vampire. The problem is that the pale skin and burning sunlight are only present in more modern depictions of vampires. Even if EPP explains those, it doesn't explain how holy water is able to harm vampires and why they can't cross flowing water. It doesn't explain how it transmits from biting or even the aggression and sexual promiscuity. It doesn't explain why they are weak to garlic and they can't see their own reflection. So, is there a disease that perfectly fits everything I just listed? There might be one. Let me introduce you to the rabies virus, the strongest candidate for the vampire myth. To start, the vampire scare of Romania that inspired the legend happened only years after a rabies outbreak in Hungary. But what about rabies makes it such a strong contender? Let's start with how rabies spreads. Rabies spreads through biting. Common animals that spread it include dogs and famously vampire bats. Bats would fly over to sleeping people and bite the only body part that was exposed, the neck. From here, the virus starts making its way to the brain. Once it reaches the brain, the victim becomes aggressive and full of fear. They become sensitive to certain stimuli, such as sunlight, foods with strong smells such as garlic, and even their own reflection. 
More famously, they become sensitive to water, such that coming into contact with water or any of the other aforementioned stimuli causes painful muscle spasms, as well as other things. As such, people with rabies convulse when in contact with holy water and are unable to cross running water. The disease causes insomnia, aggression, and even affects them sexually, causing them to be sexually promiscuous and wander around at night. One unique aspect of the rabies virus is that it has a 100% death rate, usually caused by asphyxiation, which leaves the victims with blood that stays liquid for a long period of time. Why is this important? One way they tested the dead to see if someone was a vampire was to dig them up after they had been buried for a short time, and with liquid blood, they looked lifelike, like they were still alive, so to speak. Another aspect about rabies is that the virus tends to hang out around the salivary glands, and as such, there are cases in which people have died and a few days later, blood from the mouth. Mouth bleeding doesn't occur instantly, and as such, victims would be buried before this could happen. When the victims were dug from their graves, it was common to see some with blood around their mouth. The people of the time immediately jumped to the conclusion that they were an undead monster biting people for their blood. Rabies is a terrifying disease. It affects people the same way it affects animals. That's why some people might think vampires can turn into animals, because they act the same with rabies. Since it has a 100% death rate, if you are bitten by a wild mammal, get the rabies vaccine immediately. Chapter 5 A Natural Explanation We have now examined three legendary monsters and established a possible scientific explanation for each one. Three of many hundreds of legends. What about reports of seeing Bloody Mary in the mirror? Ouija boards? Reports of alien abductions? As demonstrated with the monsters of legend, we can find natural explanations for each one. Maybe. Just maybe I might explore these other supernatural phenomena. Thanks for watching.